Hi, welcome to this introduction to your final task for Unit 1 on Ecology, which is your Bottle Biology Experiment and Report. To start, a couple of important things about the report. One is that you need to use the template posted in your Google Classroom. You have to follow the different sections, and in fact those sections should be listed in your final report, which will be submitted with a Google document. Now your report needs to include your graphs and data tables. Uh, you can't just have those in a spreadsheet somewhere. You need to actually have those in your final report on the Google document. Now, you'll also submit your spreadsheet in addition to the report, and that's because I want to see the spreadsheet where you do your work. So each student will get a copy of the, date of the spreadsheet with all of the data, and you'll be able to work with it there. So you will submit the spreadsheet, but again, you need to have the graph and data table in the actual final report. Now your bottle biology report is an individual product, so it's something you'll be working on individually and uh, showing your level of uh, proficiency in two different IB criteria. One is B, inquiring and designing. This is basically your question and hypothesis. And then uh, the second one is IB criterion C, processing and evaluating. This is your data table and graphs, uh, ways that you display and organize data and also your data interpretation. So this is your claim and evidence using the data, using the graphs, using statistics as evidence to support a claim that you're going to make. Now we've been talking about this key question, why are populations limited by their environment? And uh, what we know from our previous investigations is that they're limited by what's called limiting factors. These are things such as competition or predation, uh, the cougar here, looking at those deer, or things even like disease. So as a population grows larger, uh, they begin to compete with each other for resources, they begin to be preyed upon more frequently, and disease is uh, more frequent and more easily spread in the population. So those factors limit how large that population can get in a given ecosystem. We call that limit the carrying capacity. Now in agriculture, uh, we frequently increase the carrying capacity of a, say, a farm field by adding fertilizer. So here's some typical fertilizer, says 18, 24, 6, which means 18 parts nitrogen, 24 parts phosphorus, and 6 parts potassium. Those are nutrients that plants need and that are limited oftentimes in the soil. Uh, so if we add more to the soil, then we increase the carrying capacity and can grow more plants in a given area, which is often the goal in agriculture. So what happens when these limiting factors are eliminated, such as removing wolves from an ecosystem or uh, adding fertilizer to an ecosystem? Well, oftentimes what we see is this pattern of exponential growth. We see this really rapid growth in population size until a new limit is reached and new limiting factors begin to take over. Now, in some cases that's good, such as in agriculture, adding fertilizer, but in some cases that's really bad. Uh, so here's an example of uh, what we call eutrophication, which is when nutrients are added to an aquatic or lake ecosystem. And you can see there the normal lake on the left. And then on the right is a lake that has had a bunch of nutrients added to it, maybe from runoff from farm fields. And what happens is that those nutrients are limited in the natural ecosystem uh, that the algae need and when the fertilizer is put into the lake those algae begin to uh, increase their population very very rapidly because the limiting factor of nutrients is no longer there and we get what's called an algae bloom. Now algae blooms are uh, generally bad for aquatic ecosystems because uh, they cause a decrease in oxygen in the water and, and all kinds of other problems. But sometimes uh, changing nutrients can be good and in our case, what we've done is created a bottle ecosystem and essentially created uh, some decompo or put some decomposing material into that bottle. Now in composting, there are uh, two different types of materials that people look at. One is called brown material and one is called green. And the idea in composting, when someone's trying to have a, has a compost pile, say for their garden, is to provide the right ratio of brown to green material so that the populations of decomposers, such as fungi and bacteria, uh, can grow very quickly and break down the material very quickly. Uh, you want to convert those uh, food scraps and leaves and, and whatever 
into uh, usable soil, which is the process of decomposition. So this is what we did in our experiment. We put different ratios of browns and greens into different bottles and we're recording uh, their mass at the beginning and their mass at the end. Now some questions that you will need to investigate on your own. Uh, one is to understand why browns and greens are actually different uh, in terms of nutrients. Secondly, you'll need to think about which of those nutrients limit the populations of decomposers and how we can provide the right blend of materials to increase these populations. Now one hint that I'll give you is that all living things need carbon and nitrogen in order to survive. So it's going to have something to do with carbon and nitrogen, but uh, I'll let you do some research there to figure that out. The question then that we're investigating in this experiment is how does the amount of brown versus green material affect the rate of decomposition in a bottle ecosystem? So that's our, our scientific question. That's the question you, you will use for your report. You'll need to identify the independent and dependent variables as well as explaining why that question is a good scientific question and relevant to our audience and unit goal. Now, just as one piece of background information, keep in mind again that in this composting material that we've put into our bottles, uh, there are fungi and bacteria. These are our decomposers. And if you're thinking, well, why would the mass change? One thing to realize is that these are living, living creatures, even though we can't often see them with the naked eye. So living creatures are doing cellular respiration, which is the process of breaking down their food to get energy. We talked about that along with photosynthesis at the beginning of the unit. So here's the equation for cellular respiration, C6H12O6, which is glucose or sugar, plus oxygen becomes carbon dioxide and water and ATP, which is a form of energy. This is the energy that or these organisms need. So uh, if we're thinking about the mass here, we have a solid material in glucose and uh, water is also a solid on the other side of the, the equation there as a product. And then we start with oxygen and create carbon dioxide. Well, carbon dioxide is going to have a lot more mass than oxygen. So what's happening is that as these organisms are respiring or breaking down the organic material that we put into our bottles, uh, they're converting the solid material, the glucose and the carbon in the glucose into carbon dioxide gas, which is escaping the bottle. We don't have airtight containers. Uh, so we're actually going to, to lose that mass over time uh, as, as they do their thing and get energy. So I uh, hope this introduction is helpful. Uh, we're investigating the ratio of browns and green materials in this bottle ecosystem and looking at rate of decomposition and uh, ultimately thinking about how that could function in either natural ecosystems or in human-made ecosystems such as this garden.